Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you an update on DGOC. This will be one of my quarterly updates where I just pick out a few of the main things that happened in the past three months. Um, this will be different from looking at the quarterly update uh, from the company itself, like the, the the numbers, the financial statements and all that. That'll be, uh, once that is released, I will be doing another video on that. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the things that I think think are noteworthy and the first one is the one billion dollar deal that happened two weeks ago it's it actually happened li right around the september october mark i'm not exactly sure when it was released but um uh, it is pretty recent so i'm just gonna use it in the this quarterly update the second one is the new insider activity i'm not gonna go over everyone who has been buying and all that but there's been a new member so i just want to quickly emphasize that and lastly I want to do an update on the FTSE index so we'll get to that in a bit but let's start with the billion dollar deal first so you could go through the news releases and then you could find uh, the page on it but I noticed that they have already updated their uh, presentations the sheets and they included this sheet in it and um, this basically covers it all so at the top you can see what is happening partnering with oak tree capital management oak tree capital management is is known for um investing in distressed assets so people who do not have a lot of faith in the certain things then they will probably invest in it once they have done their research so it kind of uh goes in line with the dgoc strategy to buy uh assets uh only in this case it's mainly focused on natural gas of course but so there is a a nice agreement there and they can help each other uh, getting the better assets out there so if you looked at the initial release it looked a bit odd and i think this sheet is is like a little bit more clear in that regard so counterparty commitment one billion so what does that mean uh, oak tree capital management has a commitment that diversified gas and oil can use 1 billion of their US dollars to acquire an assets. One of the rules is that the funding allocation has to be DGOC for 50% and Oak Tree for 50% as well. What does that mean? Um, if let's say they acquire an asset for $250 million, that means that DGOC will have to pay half of that and Oak Tree will fund the rest. Does that mean that DGOC has to acquire it with uh, equity or with money itself? No. DGOC can still use the, the debt that they have, only uh, the benefit is that they can basically buy more assets while Oak Tree also benefits from the, the production of it. But we'll get to that in a bit. So DGOC receives initial promote of 5% of Oak Tree's interest. So this is what's visible here, ownership, working interest. So this is probably a bit odd, but what that means is that, okay, so they've both paid half of uh, the acquisition, but DGOC gets 52.5 of whatever it generates and Oak Tree will get 47.5%. So for DGOC, there is a benefit and uh, they have mentioned it here fully funded initial initial promote value is 50 million that's basically referring to the 2.5 percent so let's say normally did you see acquires an asset for 100 million then whatever it produces they will get 100 uh they will get 100 percent off of that now let's say they acquire something for 200 million and instead they're gonna receive 105 million while paying a hundred million. So you get a little bit more worth uh, based on the ownership. So that's beneficial. And obviously for Oak Tree, it's also very interesting because you look at uh, the rate of return that uh, DGC has on their assets. Obviously it's very, very good. It's very, very high. I think uh, it's, it's between, uh, let's say 20 to 30% normally on average on the acquisitions we've seen recently. So what is the addition to that is the reversion promote. And it's not visible here, but it was visible in the, in, in, in the news release. And what this is, if uh, Oak Tree Capital receives at least a 10% rate of return, 
then it will give 15% of oak tree's interest. So that's 15% off of 47.5%. It will give that to DGOC, which will mean that if DGOC performs very well, they will get instead of 52.5, they will get 59.6. So that's a very lucrative deal. So I'm very curious how they're going to measure this and how they're going to, um, and in what ways they're going to reach it. Like I have obviously, since I'm, pretty much fully invested in DGC. I have a lot of confidence that they will be able to reach that reversion promote deal, but um, it is not entirely clear to me how they're gonna measure it. Um, so I'm gonna be interested in that one. And uh, it could be that they do it after each year or maybe after the initial buy period of like three, four years, we will have to wait and see. I'm hoping that DG, uh, like Rusty Hudson will be interviewed at some point or we have a, a quarterly call and that somebody will ask that question so that we can actually just uh, learn from that already but for now we have to wait a bit um, so overall this is very good for DGOC and um, they have listed a few of the benefits below so creating value for investors through the initial promote that's basically referring to that 50 million right there and the second one is expanding DGO's potential to acquire large-scale asset packages so what does that mean well uh, let's say if there is like a bigger company like uh, range resources or something like that they have a lot of they have way more assets maybe in different regions as well sure with dgo's balance sheets it's, it would be hard to acquire an asset but if you can basically double with whatever you have available then you can buy bigger assets so obviously um, this gives them more opportunities out there so they don't just have to buy from smaller companies but they can maybe actually acquire something from a big company Third reason is improve market intelligence into distressed assets. So this is what I was referring to at the start. Oak Tree Capital has some experience in uh, investing in distressed assets, possibly also in the oil and gas industry. Like I'm, I would be very surprised if they hadn't because they're managing like 120 billion US dollars. So obviously the DUC's knowledge combined with Oak Tree is just more knowledge and they can put that to an advantage. Uh, fourth reason, credibility as a capable buyer. So if DGC makes an offer, obviously if you are backed by one of the, a big capital management company, uh, management firm, sorry, then um, yeah, it gives you some credibility. Uh, establishing a visible pipeline of future acquisitions. I think what this refers to is the deal that they have made that if Oak Tree Capital Management uh, no longer wishes to hold on to their working interest, uh, DGOC will have the first opportunity to buy their interest. So um, if they want to get out, DGOC buys it. And that's basically just a decent acquisition at that point then. And well, once you have done all the due diligence already, then you all already know a lot, of course. And finally, providing finance, financing flexibility throughout commodity price cycles. Sure, this is basically another uh, point that they can just um, acquire bigger assets. Like that's how I would I would see it at least. Like sure you have some more flexibility because you have more money available to do to acquire an asset. So overall I think this deal is very lucrative for DGOC. Um, I think it's also very good for O3 Capital Management because they can benefit from what I think is a very well established management team that has a great financial background, great experience in the field and is like insanely focused on just returning value to shareholders so i think oak tree capital management will be very happy with this deal afterwards as well and that is also probably why they made a reverse reverse your promote deal sure if they have at least 10 percent uh rate of return on their initial investment of 1 billion then okay you can have some more money that's basically what they make a deal for and it gives like a very good incentive to dgc to make that happen so i'm very curious what this will bring into the future I've also had a look, I didn't make a sheet on that, but I'll just tell you that now. I've also had a look at the, um, the balance sheet again of DGOC and I made an estimation that they will be able to do um, uh, acquire through debt about $600 million in the upcoming uh, three years because this deal is only available for three years. They didn't mention that here, but that was in the original sheet uh, or in the original news release as well. That means that 400 million will be necessary for equity. So uh, obviously that wouldn't be that great, but 
as we've seen with the previous equity increase even if they do it it's still beneficial for shareholders because the business grows quicker than the dilution that has happened so but i'm hoping in the next three years that they're gonna achieve bond market and, and stuff like that and they will be able to acquire money in a different kind of uh, asset stream or maybe even oak tree capital management will make them a, a loan or something who knows like i didn't expect this deal to come out like this is very new for me it was also interesting to just see how this works that's also why it took a while to um figure out this video because i need to make sure that i understand everything before i release the video of course and uh, i think it is interesting for other people as well to really learn how this ownership and working interest works why because um it's just a very lucrative deal and i'm thinking that there will be other industries where this will be applicable as well for example the um what's it called uh, the pharmaceutical industry i think uh, stuff like working interest is very common there as well so all in all very good deal and um, yeah i'm looking forward to what dgc will bring in the next three years because of this so the new insider activity like i'm not going to mention all the stuff people that have been buying shares there was a few others or at least one that i recall straight out of my head right now that have bought shares but um, there's a uh, i believe we had eight insider shareholders and this is a new one melanie little independent non-executive director of DGO and she acquired uh, 20,000 ordinary shares and um, yeah if you look at the price that she bought it for it's about 110 pence if you look at the current price right now you're still buying below that so you can buy at a more attractive price than uh, the initial price of uh, Melanie Little so looks pretty good so far and obviously it's always a great sign when insiders are buying and uh, the fact that there's a ninth or maybe even a tenth inside a shareholder is just a great sign that across management people have a lot of faith in in dgoc and the business model and they think that it isn't attractively priced right now and as you guys know from my previous videos i agree with that so um yeah it's just uh, very nice to see and finally i want to give an up update on the FTSE index um i made an estimate before that once they have uh, i'm not sure if i made a video about that actually but that was actually my my own thought process is that the moment they reach the FTSE index, which happened uh, well on the weekend between 18 September and 21st of September, I expected them in the next few weeks that they would have a share price increase. But what I did not foresee, and I guess which can always happen, is that, uh, well, in this case, the, the, the number one shareholder of DGOC started selling out their shares. It's hard to figure out why. Uh, it could be... I, th I think it would be likely if they, for example, already invest in the FTSE index, that they just uh, take out uh, their investment in this company to not uh, be overly exposed to DGOC. Um, but it could also be that they just don't want to invest in, in oil and gas because of the ESG investment, even though it's ma mostly natural gas, of course. It's just the reputation and stuff that these firms have to consider as well. So what we've seen in the, well, in the end of September, mid to end September, is that someone who had uh, over 7% of their shares, of the outstanding share, so that's about, um, oof, I need to think right now. I think that's about um, 60, 60 million shares or something. They were able to close their uh, position at least uh, un un below the 3% threshold of reporting. So obviously I don't know how many shares they're holding right now. But um, yeah, like a lot of shares were sold because of that and yeah if you have a lot of selling then even if you have an insane amount of buying power uh, the share price will not appreciate that much so i think where my previous thesis was okay we can see a slight price increase like let's say five to ten percent in the dgoc share price uh, actually changed and because they sold all their shares of most of their shares we've actually been able to because of the FTSE index we've actually been able to maintain the share price between 100 and 110 pence so all in all it's not uh, it wasn't as great as I foresaw it to be but nonetheless I'm very happy that um, uh, we we entered the FTSE index because yeah it kind of reduced the, the downturn uh, in this period so what's next for DGOC um i'm waiting for the q q3 um earnings report like am i expecting something ridiculous there no i think the dividends will be the same 
Um, this, by the way, a 12% dividend yield as of now. I've checked in the earnings report, so that's very good. Um, so I'm not expecting anything major in that regard, but regardless, I'll be making a video off of that just to just share with you guys my thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to end this video now. I think I gave you guys an update on the major things that happened in September. If you guys have noticed anything different and you want to hear my thoughts on it, uh, feel free to ask me in the comments. Obviously, I've seen it all, so I tend to have an opinion on it as well. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please like the video. And um, I expect to have another video next week about my IAG investment, which is uh, International Airlines Consolidated Group. The, I will be posting like the 10 reasons, the main reasons why I invest in that company. Uh, since my initial investment, the company is down 80%. It has share dilution. It looks like the absolute worst investment right now. But I do think that uh, of all the airline companies out there, these are still the most likely to recover from it in a shareholder beneficial way. Uh, what, what do I mean with shareholder beneficial? It's like, sure, maybe Air France KLM, the the airline, it will probably survive because of all the government support, but I don't think you will see any good value for shareholders in the upcoming 10 years for that company. I might actually make a video about that as well, like why I'm not investing in Air France KLM. Because, uh, well, since I'm Dutch, a lot of people ask me about KLM, of course. Um, so it would be interesting as well. But um, yeah, for now, I'm going to end this video and I'll see you guys uh, next week. As always, please keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor. The content on this channel and on my website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only.